What did the vice president say to you? You know, we started, uh, he just wanted to hear my story. He wanted to hear my experience. And so I started the, the kind of table off sharing, you know, what happened to me, similar to what I just told you. And sh sh told them, you know, my experience is going to gun shows with an undercover camera and buying all sorts of guns, AK-47s, Tech 9s, Mac 11s, even the same 9mm that was used to shoot me, all without a background check, all without any paperwork, no questions asked, all legal. And my, my question with the Vice President, sir, why is that legal? Why is that our public policy to allow guns to be sold very publicly without a background check? You know, and, he, you know, he, I think that was one of the issues. I think he had a lot of, you know, already pre-understood consensus that this was one of the ways to move forward. And um, was happy that, you know, happy to share my story with the Vice President. Did he make any promises, any personal promises to you? I think he made personal promises to everybody in that room, all 20 of us, you know, saying that we're, as an administration, going to take every single possible action that we can, be that executive actions, be that a legislative package, be that creating programs to deal with the culture around guns and violence in America. I mean, we're kind of similar to how we've addressed uh, drinking and driving, how over several decades of legislative regulations, as well as cultures changing, drinking and driving and wearing a seatbelt, we've greatly reduced the number of people killed every year from car accidents. And so we, we want to do the exact same th thing here with gun violence. We're talking with Colin Goddard. He was one of the uh, survivors of the Virginia Tech massacre. 32 people were killed in the uh, largest mass, deadliest mass shooting in U.S. history. Colin, I want to get to your reaction to some of the folks uh, on the right who are against uh, gun control. And to set this up, uh, there was a recently a Gun Appreciation Day. Here is a Larry Ward, who is the chairman of Gun Appreciation Day, talking about what he believes the significance of it. Listen. I think Martin Luther King would agree with me, if he were alive today, that if African Americans had been given the right to keep and bear arms from day one of, of the country's founding, perhaps slavery might not have been a chapter in our history. Colin, the argument that we just need more people having guns. We just need everybody to have a gun and everything is solved. What's your reaction to that? If the idea that the United States of America, the country with 300 million guns already in circulation, a country that allows people to carry guns in public, on its streets, in its stores, just about anywhere, if the idea that if we only had more guns in more places of our country, we would become safer, we would already be the safest place in the entire world. My question to him is how many more hundred million guns do we need before things become safer for everybody? I just don't get it fundamentally. And to have a gun appreciation day on a day that, mem that memorializes the life of someone who was murdered by somebody with a gun, I can't, is, is, is frankly incredibly insensitive and, and tone deaf. And I just think it's really out of touch with the vast majority of Americans in this country. The National Rifle Association has said repeatedly that uh, they want to try to help somehow by putting uh, armed guards at every sort of high school and I assume at every college campus. Uh, there are some schools that are now voting about whether to let their janitors uh, carry weapons. On that sort of narrow issue of putting uh, armed guards at, at schools, what do you make of it? You know, I think that was a deliberate attempt by the National Rifle Association to change the conversation that was being had in the media and amongst the general population of people that, that you know, the general consensus that was building around things like background checks from all gun sales and limiting assault weapons and assault clips. So it was a diversionary tactic to try to get us off of, you know, like the path that we were moving forward on and getting a lot of progress on. So I really think that the vast majority of people who heard that think that was also a ridiculous statement and you know realizes that America is not going to shoot our way out of our problem with shootings, that violence is not the solution to more violence, and that we are better than this fundamentally, and that there are other ways we, that we can move forward. And I think you know the vast majority of people that have reached out to us since that, uh, since that press conference has been unbelievable. There were so many gun owners and NRA members themselves who have said, oh, we heard that, and that it does not speak for me. You know, I support background checks. That's not going to stop me from owning a gun, but that's going to make sure that someone with a felony record or someone with a domestic violence restraining order or a diagnosed dangerous mental illness will not get their hands on a gun so easily. I can support that. So we've actually seen more people come to us, I think, as a result of that press conference. We've heard, uh, Colin, uh, a lot of people describe what happens at uh, gun shows, but you've actually, you've actually been there. You've actually gone undercover with your cameras. What are you picking up? What's the overall vibe you get when you go to these gun shows and people can buy and sell weapons with no questions asked? Is that, the, is that what most people at these gun shows want? Or are these just some of the sellers who want them because they want to expedite their business? Give us a, a rough sense about that. I mean, what happens at gun shows 
you know, also happens over the internet every day. The internet is the largest gun show that happens every single day in this country. Um, you know, the, the talk, talk about the gun show loophole, it doesn't really do justice to the, to the greater issue, which is unchecked gun sales, like I said, which occur over the internet and classified ads, as well as in newspapers and also gun shows. Gun shows, in my opinion, are kind of the most egregious violation of our law that says felons and the mentally ill can't buy guns because you literally have two markets existing side by side at a publicly advertised event. You have some guys selling guns at gun shows who have licenses who are required to do background checks on everybody and then literally two feet away from them can be someone without a license who can sell those exact same guns to the exact same people but don't have to do a background check. You know, and so it was, you know, it was unbelievable how I could literally have been denied from someone turned around two tables over and bought that same gun. And actually, I found out that people not doing background checks will actually charge you more money for that same gun than a dealer would through a check because, as they explained to me, hey, man, there's no check. There's no paperwork. That's got to be worth something. And for people who are trying to get through a background check and not, not go through one, that's, a, that's another 50 bucks that they'll pay. We're talking with Colin Goddard, who was a, uh, one of the survivors from the Virginia Tech uh, massacre five and a half years ago. Colin, for all those people who have been affected by gun violence, and, and obviously so tragically the, the, the families of the 20 children in Newtown, Connecticut, others who were injured, uh, you've been able to take an incredible, uh, incredible tragedy in your life and seeing people killed right in front of your eyes and turn something positive to it by working on behalf and by being a voice for people who believe that uh, gun control can help make everybody safer. What, is, what would you say, though, to, to families that are just sort of dealing with this now, where it's sort of fresh, the, the wounds to them, the loss of their children? Is there anything you could say to them about what the next couple of years might be like and, and how they can get through it? It's kind of tough. You know, everyone kind of handles things differently, and there's a lot of different circumstances that leads to a lot of different outcomes. But I think... You know, what, what benefited me was, was being with my friends and my family at first, you know, being close to those who, who know who care about you. And I think every friend I ever made in college came to visit me, you know, after that when I was still recovering in, uh, you know, in my apartment. And it was really beneficial not to, you know, not to be in front of the media, but to talk to my friends about what happened. It was easier to get it off your chest. You know, I think that's another important thing is, is get, you know, get this off your chest. Don't keep it inside of you. You know, I've, I've met a journalist very early on in my recovery who told me he's interviewed people you know 10 20 years down the road who have experienced all sorts of traumatic situations and the people who can talk about it 10 20 years later seem to be better off than those who can't so he said my advice to you is is share your story get it off your chest you know it doesn't matter you have, about if if you talk to a psychologist or professional what's more important is that you're talking it doesn't matter who's listening you know so so really be with your family be with your loved ones you know you know and, and, and share your story. Don't keep it in. You know, celebrate the life of the person that you lost. You know, and, and, uh, and over time, hopefully you'll find a way to kind of take that personal negative experience and put it towards something positive, no matter what that is. Well, Colin, we, uh, we so appreciate uh, you sharing your experiences and perspective with us on Take Action News. You're an amazing guy, and I think a lot of people would consider you, rightfully, a national treasure for what you bring to uh, this debate and this dialogue and what you've done with your life. So thank you so much for being part of Take Action News. We appreciate it. Hey, thanks for the support, David, and keep talking about this stuff. Thanks. Absolutely. Colin Goddard uh, with the Brady Campaign. Amazing, amazing young man. Take Action News continues after this.